Well, I'm most surprised by things attacking me in the sea. That what? That's exactly. just because you have limited visibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. That's exactly what I said. Exactly. I agree. I'm agreeing with that. It's just because that's not a sne that's not sneaky on the animal's part. It's dumb on your part for being in their environment. Oh, so it's dumb to be in the ocean. Oh yes, yeah, it's absolutely dumb to be in the ocean. Yeah. If being I no, I think I think being in the ocean is awesome. But if you're concerned about being snuck up on by an a by an ocean animal, then yeah, don't go to the ocean. If you're okay with it, if you if you if you accept the risk, then you're totally yeah. Fine. No, I'm not saying I'm concerned by it. I'm just saying that it's a high problem. If it's something were to come up, I wouldn't expect it. It would surprise me. It'd be a sneaky I just attack. don't think that if you were to search, what's the sneakiest animal? It would say fish. No, I agree. I, agree I also that. think that. I think that, uh, what, <laughs> see, you think it's, <laughs> hello and welcome to another episode of the F Face Podcast. My name is Jeff Ramsey with me, as always, Andrew Panton, Gavin Free. I believe this is episode 129, correct me if I'm wrong. That here's, is correct. Here's the deal. You think being snuck up on in the, you would be caught off guard and surprised by being snuck up on the ocean by a fish because your neck is always going to be, in this scenario, you're imagining your neck is above water and you're not looking at your feet. If you were to walk around with like a piece of cardboard around your neck sticking out so that you couldn't see your feet as you walk down the street, you would be just as surprised by a squirrel or a bird or a... Yeah. Or, an, or a rat or a dog or a cat attacking you. It's, a, it's purely a yeah. peripheral vision thing. No, absolutely. But the question was... What is the sneakiest animal? And I was thinking that 100% of animal interactions I've had in the sea, I'd categorize as sneaky. I never saw it coming, as opposed to land. I think they have a distinct advantage. I'm not saying it's because of the animal itself, but their environment gives them an upper Ooh. edge in sneakiness. Now, see, I would argue that the hardest place on Earth to be snuck up on is the ocean if you're underwater with goggles on because you can see 365 degrees around you at all times. Whereas if you're in the woods or the jungle or even in a neighborhood, <laughs> there's a million places for animals to hide. You can see 306, that's like all the way around plus a little bit more. Yeah, you just gotta do a flip or a turn. 365 there's, no, there, there's, nothing, there's nothing around you impairing your vision. It's just open water and animals. So you can yeah, you see, can yeah. see 24, 24, seven degrees around. I'm yeah, arguing you against your point, though, because your stance was essentially, if you're prepared to not be snuck up on, you will not be snuck up on. I don't know what that proves. Your statement. I just think if you stick your head above anything, then you're in the same situation. There's nothing going to So I don't think it has anything to do with a fish. I just I think, think it, if you can say a coyote is sneakier than a fish, then a fish isn't going to be the sneakiest animal. And a coyote is definitely sneakier than a fish. Oh, 100%. Like, yeah. what's, hey, real quick, mm. what's Swiper? He's a, a fox, a right? Fox, right? Yeah. He's the a sneakiest fox. animal on earth, right there. Swiper is his whole job is being sneaky, and he's a fox. So I would say the fox is the sneakiest animal. Gavin, mm. any thoughts on the sneakiest animal? Uh, anglerfish. That's a fish. You think an anglerfish is the sneakiest animal? <laughs> You're like, oh, look at that bright light, and then. <laughs> That's <laughs> a great point. <laughs> That's an animal that makes you think it's something it's not. Can we name yeah. another and animal that's it's just big and there and dark and you can't it's it, if anything, it's the Could scariest you imagine thing on the planet. If you thought you're looking at like a Subaru and then it ate you, that'd be terrifying. Like it's <laughs> just different. <laughs> I what? think that if if you can say a skunk is sneakier than a than like any of these fish, then a fish isn't on this list. And a skunk is way sneakier than any of these fish. Does skunk doesn't matter? dangle shit that you want in front of it, though. No, but it's sneaky. I don't know if a skunk is sneaky. I also don't I think disagree. their intent is sneaky. Uh, so are you talking about the act of sneaking, not the act of, like, being ambushed? I'm trying to figure this out myself. I don't think anybody said anything about being ambushed. I just said, what's the sneakiest animal? Yeah, I definitely don't want to be ambushed by skunks. See? That's a tough one. And then, Although, so here's the thing. I posed this, this is before we started recording. I posed this to Andrew and I, and then he said fish. And I said, I don't know about fish. I think it's mostly the environment. He said, okay, so we're taking all animals and putting them on the same plane. And I don't agree with that because that eliminates all birds and, and all fish. It doesn't make any sense. I just don't think a fish is the sneakiest animal. Well, also for, for Gavin to be snuck up on by an angler fish, his bones would have compressed and crushed well before that because they're like a thousand <laughs> feet underwater, right? <laughs> like there's never a scenario sometimes. where you and an angler fish are going to be in the same location. Yeah, and it's alive. so far <laughs> down that sunlight doesn't reach the area. They could travel. <laughs> Why can't they? You got a curious anglerfish. It can't come up to the surface. It's not a lot. Is there anything that prevents that from happening? It probably explode. Really? Yeah. I don't know. 
<laughs> if it's I like meant so. for low, if, if it's meant for super high pressure, then you bring it into a low pressure environment. Wouldn't it just like all that shit leak out? I don't know. I hope so. I don't want to create a scenario in which I could find an angler fish just while I'm walking on the beach. If we could choose angler fish, then I'm going to pick the scariest animal on earth. Or no, sorry, I'm the scariest animal in the universe is a space worm. Because I've never seen a space worm, but worms are everywhere. And I guarantee you somewhere in space, in the infinite uh, of space, there are space worms. And they're fucking wiggling around right now and you'll never see them coming. That's true. By like we're a tartigrade. Like microscopic. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great example. I always thought fish were dumb for falling for the, the angler fish trap. But I, I, thinking about I think I would fall for that. If there was just like a light in the sky I wasn't expecting, I'd definitely get eaten by that. Well, like, plus the there's never any light, right? So it's like you're just swimming along in the darkness. Uh, That's true. Sucking, and then suddenly <laughs> the world looks different in a way it never has before. That'd be That's pretty terrifying. Jarring. Yeah. I have a question. Okay. Yeah. What, what are you guys on about? I have no well, idea. Eric asked what the sneakiest animal is. Why are you asking yeah, that? Yeah, we Eric? were just having pleasantries, and I just oh, asked okay. about what the sneakiest animal, because I think it's probably some kind of cat. And then Andrew said fish, and now here we are. Not a yeah, good point in that the pink panther is very sneaky. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> well, he was an international jewel thief. I, 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 I popped in, Gavin, when Andrew was explaining that he thinks he can sneak up on an owl. <laughs> <laughs> I could. That an was my owl? argument against what, because Eric said an owl is sneakier than a fish, and I was saying, I don't think an there's any way in hell. It might be the greatest anti sneak device. It can you see all around. Wait, that's what I said. <laughs> I think I said 365 degrees instead of 300 or 365 days instead of 360 degrees. But like an owl can see anywhere. <laughs> Have you seen me try to sneak? Uh, I would say that with your ankle dexterity, you might be one no, no, no. of the worst answer, sneakers answer on the, the planet. No, answer the question. Have you seen me try to sneak? No. Exactly. That's how good Andrew, I am. Andrew, you, you can hardly walk with your ankles. I don't understand how you're sneaking. Are you like belly crawling? Like, what are well, you talking about? Listen, you don't need to question the form. You just are not going to know I'm there. I'm in and out. You explained how you tried to sneak um, Chinese food menus onto doors in a neighborhood to steal your own package back, and it didn't sound very stealthy to me, buddy. I've sat in a room that Gavin walked through, and he didn't see me <laughs> once. This is why my sneaking has established, and I wasn't even Being trying in that moment. Already in oh. the room, does it? If you're trying to, if you're there trying to steal the Pink Panther diamond, and you're already next to the diamond, that's not the sneaky part. No, that's brilliant. He wins the argument right there. I think you're right. You blended into the environment I blended into and nobody the world. noticed you. But you yeah. had to walk in on your busted ankles to get in there. And you, you never saw it happen, out. did you? You're Gavin? not sneaky. You're just early. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's rude. Very sneaky. Being early is a pretty <laughs> sneaky technique, though, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to rob a bank by standing in the spot <laughs> the bank will eventually be built on. <laughs> <laughs> what? What would be the problem? I mean, obviously, that's a ridiculous scenario. I can't be mad at people being early. Nobody's complaining about early. No one's been robbed and complained that they weren't there, like, in the right time. Like, it's a Home ridiculous Alone, what say. Home Alone 2, they robbed uh, Duncan's toy chest by getting there early. They didn't sneak in. Well, that's pretty sneaky. I, I will but say a more that's an act of sneaking. <laughs> yeah. It's more, more, a more appropriate analogy, Gavin, would be I'm going to stand where I think they're going to build a bank. It would be I get to the bank right as they open, and then I stand so still all day long that the bank closes around me and nobody notices me anymore because I've blended, I've blended into the environment. As soon as the lights turn off, then you go and you rob them. I can't wait to sneak up on Gavin at some point. You're going to be shocked. You're going to be stunned by my sneaking abilities. When we're next together in person... Your challenge is to tap me on the back without me knowing you're there. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> Easy. I'm going to have to bring a camera because you're not even going to feel it. You're not even going to know it happened. <laughs> so I'm going to get a picture of you I touching am. my back and I wouldn't yeah. even know that it happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm also going to take your wallet and, and your watch. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Hang I'm on. just going to rob you. Hang on. You're going to rob? You're going to rob <laughs> yeah. Gavin? Just to illustrate a point. Not because I want to, but because he's... <laughs> I don't want to rob from you, but you're an idiot. And let me I show you how sneaky I am. I'm going to tape a $100 bill to my back, and you're not going to be able to get anywhere near it. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna be like, oh wow, this bat you didn't do anything, Andrew. You're gonna go back there. It's gonna be fucking monopoly money. It's gonna be gone. I'm gonna do switch <laughs> oh, you one. Replaced you. it with a I'm forger. gonna replace <laughs> it with some monopoly money. I went through a magic phase between the ages of eight and twelve. Okay, I know my sleight of hand. I could palm coins. 
You went through levitate. a magic phase. Oh, for big four magic years? phase. Yeah, yeah. Was that before, was, or after the sneaking phase? Uh, no, it was all part of it. It just built onto it. Okay. It's built onto it. Yeah. I can levitate if you stand at a specific angle and don't ask any questions. I don't know. That takes a lot of uh, single ankle strength. I'm not sure you can still do that. Oh, no, no, I definitely can. I would get, I was the worst magician of all time because I would get too excited and I wouldn't practice the tricks enough and they'd never work. And if they did work, I would do them back to back. And uh, then it would just be obvious that how, how it worked. That it was <laughs> so problem. you're going to draw upon your skills as a as the four year long worst magician ever. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I am. Mm hmm. OK, it's all part of the illusion. Think of a card right now, Gavin. Think of a card. Dr Think of no, yeah. don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> no, I was halfway through making a different joke. <laughs> OK, think of a card. Any card. OK. Do you have in your head you, you did the suit? You have a suit color. It. You got it. OK. Yep. Nine of diamonds. Uh, shockingly close, but no. Ah, damn. That was the but seven if I was right, though, it's seven. Oh, you were close. two off. That's pretty good. A seven Listen. and a nine even look like cousins. They're Wait, so close. how? How did that trick work, Andrew? Like, what was the trick there? That was just you picking. You had a one in fifty-two chance. Yeah, yeah. If okay. I would have got it, it would have been pretty cool. I'm that pretty close. Been, honestly, if this that was, was slightly worrying listen, that you got so close. If this was a golf game, I'm in. I'm in perfect setup for a birdie right now. I consider this a win. That was, I'm right next to the hole. Didn't get in it. I'm right there, why were though. You, why were you talking to me about darts the other day, by the way? Oh, I was just thinking about darts. I have a friend who, who got into darts, and I'm terrible at it. I asked Gav, uh, I'd love to hear everyone's response to this. Uh, okay. First of all, Jeff, uh, Eric, are, are you good at darts? Would you consider yes. yourself decent? Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm fine. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. Okay, so as people that consider themselves decent to good at darts, how many throws do you think it would take you to hit a bullseye? Uh, I, I mean, that's, that's not how darts Games no, work. no, not at all. But I could probably get one in in ten. I think one I think if you gave I think if you gave me ten darts and I was really aiming for it, I bet I could get one in ten. Eric, I could do you it gave in the exact same answer as me. I did, uh, did I really? Six. Six? Okay. Yeah. The difference is Gavin said he was bad at darts and he was one in ten. Which I, I think is bad. I just said I'm not good. Like I wouldn't win a game of darts. But you give so me you, ten darts, I can put it where I want. So you'd say you're average at darts? Because I assumed you were bad. You're right. I could have phrased that better. I just know you're not good based on your um, I'd say I'm below average, but I could still hit a bullseye in 10. See, I, that was shocked because I think I'm bad at darts. I, my number is like 250. I think it would take me around 250 darts. Oh, yeah. You said, darts you said 250. I said I could do 250 blindfolded. There's no way. This I could zero eventually chance. get a bullseye with 250 blindfolded darts. No way. Dude, you could hit a bullseye just if, if you've got 250 darts to do it in. You could just grab a handful of 20 and <laughs> chuck them all at once and you'd get a bullseye. I think just you're greatly averages. overestimating. I don't think I, think I this am. Is, I think this is a regulation distance, like seven feet from the board, <laughs> yeah. blindfolded. If someone was given call outs like colder, warmer, I could get you a, I could get a bullseye 250. Big John, little John. I, <laughs> I, I just like you're saying we're overestimating 250 is an insane amount of darts to throw at the board and not I agree. Get a bullseye. <laughs> no, like, I agree. I That's a bad idea. You physically I, couldn't fit that many darts on a board, I don't think. Oh, I think I think I could easily. You want to get a dartboard? We can figure this out. I'll get a dartboard. I, mean, the, I bet you would take over 250. Mm, you might be right. That's ridiculous. The problem is, though, people will just assume I'm throwing it on purpose, that I'm not. That'd be the issue. That, that would be my assumption. Yeah. I'd be cheating in some way. I feel like we need to have a, like, the next time we're all together, we need to have a dart off now. Like, I think oh, we just a need a separate sideshow called, a spinoff called Burger Confidence, where <laughs> it's, just, it's just the bets. <laughs> I don't think, I think if you threw 10 darts a day, you wouldn't get it within a week. That's Ten ridiculous. That's 70 darts? Yeah. If you threw 10 darts a day, you'd, you'd, get, a da you'd get a dart, you'd get a bullseye a day. There's the no, I no, you. I know it's the not that hard man. Can you throw like, do you have no aim whatsoever? I have a friend that's good. They went over 20 on their first attempt. It's tough. Hmm. I, I think most people like if you have aim, you have aim. Like one time at work, I, Gavin was on one side of the office and I was 15 <laughs> feet away. And I, with one ping pong ball, threw it so hard. And I was trying to hit him in the forehead. I hit him right between the eyes so hard. I split his head open. 
Like, and that was just one shot. If I could do that with yeah. a ping pong ball, I could definitely do it with a dart, which is designed to be thrown. I think I had like a cut or a scab there, and you just made me bleed with a ping pong ball. I don't, like, I get the throwing mechanic. I don't think those two equate at all. Absolutely. I don't think it's the exact same I, thing. I disagree. There's no I difference like, between throwing a dart and a baseball. Nah, I, I don't think that's true. Mm -mm. I learned uh, last week that I'm pretty good at throwing axes. I don't think that's a skill. The, okay. the bar throwing axe thing? There's a bunch of hipster bars in Austin that would disagree with you. I watched Dan and BK do it after me, and I, I was, I, I scored pretty well. Yeah, maybe I've only seen, because I've never done it, but I've only seen videos of people do it, and they always do really well. So that could be, that could be adjusting my, it just doesn't seem that hard. Uh, to be honest, it didn't feel very hard, <laughs> but it looked hard for Dan. So you think throwing an axe is easier than throwing a dart? Well, yes. the, the axe landed wherever I looked. I feel like a, a dart, you need more precision than that. It's a different, yeah, it's, it's a more precise tool. Absolutely. You've got a wide range. You've got a big face on that axe to hit the, the board. Get stuck in. I think I could throw, the, I think, the, I think it's, it's really, like, I have not done axe throwing, but I would imagine it's pretty easy to bonk it off the handle and not get I, it into the mm. wood at all. To me, I feel like axe throwing is all about form. That's what darts is all about. No, but I, like, I feel like there's a mechanism to like releasing <laughs> of the axe that is opposed to, it's more precise with a dart. You got a smaller range. I, dude, throwing is all about form, no matter what you're throwing, <laughs> whether it's a football or a soccer ball. No, but I, a... I feel like I don't know how to hold a dart. I feel like my finger position might be wrong, like the technique, how much wrist do I, like I just, I feel like mechanically I'm in the woods. Uh, not the woods. I'm in the sea. That's a better analogy. It's a sneakier place. I'm in the ocean when it comes to <laughs> throwing a dart. I don't know what's going on. But when it's an axe, I feel like you just kind of let go of the thing. And I'm probably completely wrong, but it just doesn't seem that difficult. Yeah, it definitely feels... The axe felt a lot easier to me. Eric, why is this wild? Eric's freaking out. I, I just don't... I don't get the, like, the pushback on the axe thing and how it doesn't... Like, it's one-to-one -one with darts. Like, none of this makes any sense. But, like... But also... I can't throw a frisbee to save my life. What? I can't. I just can't. I don't know what it is. <laughs> is it There's like something. One of the things you're embarrassed about. <laughs> yes, yeah, it is. I'm very embarrassed about the way I throw a frisbee. Uh, people invite me to go like fris frisbee golf is like a thing in Austin. People invite uh -huh. me to go and I turn them down. <laughs> people like Jack. Yeah, uh, Jack has not, but uh, uh. Ho hopefully that keeps up because uh, I don't want to go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But uh, so I can kind of see what Andrew's saying, but the form of a dart, I, I agree with Jeff. It's very close to like a baseball. It's very close to other things and especially like ax throwing. So to say that like the technique of one is so different from the technique of the other, I don't agree with. And it's really something. And I like that he said, I've seen people do it and it seems like it's easy. <laughs> Darts seems like it's easy. It's darts. <laughs> darts is so easy. They allow you to do it around alcohol. They encourage you to do it while drunk at every bar in the world. I, just, <laughs> I feel like your your dart throw to axing would be like saying I can drive a boat because I know how to drive a car. Like it's the mechanically like you're you're driving vehicles, but they're completely different. I think it's no, a different thing. It's I don't not think that it's different. One to one. It's pretty like driving anything is is pretty similar. I think. I don't unless think that's it's true. Got, unless it's got a complicated uh, clutch of some kind. Hmm. Okay. You ever, you ever driven a boat? Yeah. You steer uh, left, it goes left. You steer right, it goes right. I don't think I have. You move up, it goes up fast. You move back, it goes slow. <laughs> it goes up. <laughs> it's pretty. Well, you get like the the handle that you just go up to go forward. It's like Star Trek and down yeah. you go back. No, those are great. I, I don't think I've ever driven a boat. I have played Hydro Thunder in the arcade, and you got the little stick on that. That's great. <laughs> And that's pretty that that's pretty similar to playing Outrun or Hang On or Ridge Racer. <laughs> I'm an automatic guy in those games, though. I don't, yeah, I don't fuck too. with the shift. It's too. It's too bullshit. The, uh, it's the it's way easier to drive a shift in real life than in a video game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when I was a kid, I uh, for some reason I had a tennis racket. I had and I got a new tennis racket, so my old one was like a spare. And for some reason, I really wanted to throw it. To see what it felt like. The, the axe throwing reminded me of this. But I lived, I had such a small back garden and my road was so crammed in and small. I felt like I couldn't throw it as hard as I could without hitting something. <laughs> so I walked all the way to this field <laughs> to throw my tennis racket to see what it what? felt like. What? <laughs> How did it feel? 
You feel good? It's really satisfying. Yeah. It's really satisfying to throw something that's like top heavy because it goes like. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember just being like sneaking around, just being like, oh, I want to go, go somewhere and throw this. <laughs> Now, if you were sneakier, would you have gone more often? Or where does your sneak skill align with your tennis throwing? If I was sneakier, I probably would have gone under the water. Really? With the wow. fish. Now, that wouldn't be fun to throw under the water, though. That'd be terrible. Agreed. You're right. That's a good yeah. point. Resistant? <laughs> Eric, Eric said something earlier that triggered an idea I was debating on having with y'all uh, in this. Are we doing two episodes today? I assume so. I oh, assume so shit. Well. Are we? I thought so. I, I assumed so as well. So uh, uh, I wasn't sure if I talk about this episode or not. But um, I, was, I was thinking about mayonnaise, right? Oh, and how much I fucking hate mayonnaise. And I was mayonnaise? thinking... I w- mayonnaise? Yeah, like, like I just can't stand mayonnaise, right? Yeah. Uh, it's it's yeah. white. I don't like white stuff. It's probably the grossest of all white things to me, maybe, is mayo. Uh, um, mm. Mayo or, or maybe... Maybe cream cheese. Cream cheese. Actually, cream cheese. Because if I, if I smell mayonnaise, I want to throw up. But if I look at cream cheese, I want to throw up. <laughs> uh, so, and I was wondering, like, could I train myself to like mayonnaise if I had to? Like, if somebody said, like, I need you, uh, I need you uh, to like mayonnaise. Here's a million dollars in a year. Could I get there? And I feel like I probably could, right? Like, I feel like there are probably things that we all hate that we, if we wanted to, like, get over this hurdle, we could probably learn to like. And I wonder if if we agreed to do it, we could get Eric good at Frisbee. Like, we could start <laughs> training and practicing and turn Eric's fr- Frisbee failure into a Frisbee success. Here's, here's the thing. I, Jeff, maybe you could. I don't know what Gavin and Andrew are providing in this situation. What do you mean? <laughs> I think it's to improve pretty... your form and yeah. frisbee throwing, yeah. Like, what could we bring to the table? Yeah, if Mister Three Hundred Darts over here isn't going to be helpful to you. I'm terrible. I'm a bad frisbee thrower too. <laughs> See? See? So what? So Jeff, it would just be me and you throwing a frisbee, and well, then I'll Gavin is also th- yeah, and then Gavin. Would well, so so that's... I so I stand by my statement. <laughs> that sounds like two friends hanging out on the weekend. Uh, it sounds lovely. Thanks for the invite. Uh, <laughs> I've seen I've seen Gav I've seen Gavin throw a frisbee though we've thrown Have frisbees you? together yeah we, we were got okay. a, oh we got one stuck in a tree didn't we yeah we remember we used to live over off uh back when we lived down uh at the rental house we were uh we th- with Jordan Swears we threw frisbees a couple times <laughs> that's true For I think I have reason. a picture of him climbing a tree to get it out <laughs> <laughs> frisbees are satisfying to throw what happens when you f- throw a frisbee Eric it goes way off uh to the side. Uh, I try to make it go straight. I do the thing. I look at it. I point my toe. It's go release uh, right where I need it to be, and then it just keeps going off to the right. Are uh, you putting? Are you putting your whole body into it? Though? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm doing everything. There's just something about the mechanic of it where I can't get. I don't know. I I'm fine with every other sport. I can throw a football, throw a baseball. I, I'm fine at sports, <laughs> golf, whatever. But for some reason, I throw a frisbee and it just doesn't go anywhere where I need it to go. And and the worst, the worst part, the worst part about throwing a frisbee wrong is you got to go get it. Well, so and it's a long. I just and boy, it's a long walk to wherever it ended up. Kevin, what did you expect him to say? That was a ridiculous question by you. No. No. What, happened, like, what happens when you throw it? it? He misses. That's the whole point. It doesn't turn no, into it like a fucking well, no. It could have gone straight into the ground. Owl. It could have not gone very far. It, it could have been an accuracy matter? issue. No, I, I agree matter? with Gavin here. I think the answer dictates how you fix the problem. Like Listen. if he's like, every time I throw it, it goes straight in the fucking air. Then you're like, like straight up. You're like, oh, okay. Well, your angle's no, wrong. Listen, I'm not going to argue with you about this, Jeff. You're the fucking Tiger Woods of disc golf by how it sounds. But <laughs> Gavin, on the other hand, I have no confidence in his ability to throw a frisbee. You I don't know what he's trying to diagnose. Give me one of those freaking little aerobie things. Give me one of those rings. I will send that thing over everything that we're looking at. Th- those things go so <laughs> far. <laughs> what does that prove? What are you proving by doing that? What are you saying? I, that I'm shit at frisbee. Yeah, if we're talking about accuracy, you're just like I can throw a thing far. That's great. No, I think but I that's not t- what it's, you that's say. Not how you play tree. frisbee? You say hit that tree. I'll get it in the tree. What if it was like a small Christmas tree? I'll give it a damn good go. I'll get close. Okay. Okay. Here's the thing with Eric though, and and his his problem is one we can fix. Eric, I've got a high speed camera. We can do slow mo mm-hmm. sports mm-hmm. analysis mm-hmm. No. on your release mm-hmm. point, and we <laughs> can hone it. You could, yeah, Eric. It is all in the wrist. 
all, uh, the frisbee. And by the way, I've never played disc golf in my life. I don't even think I've ever thrown one, <laughs> but I've th- thrown a fucking frisbee. It's all. It's a hundred percent in the in the wrist f- motion. We Gavin, can fix that, Gavin. Yeah. I think that your solution is great and is half of a solution because you're going to film me in slow motion <laughs> throwing a frisbee, and then we're gonna look at it, and and everyone's <laughs> just gonna go, just throw it. You know, look right there. Throw it straighter, and yep. nothing's gonna happen. No one here can break down film like a sports analyst. <laughs> you're I just do. gonna show. We're gonna. You're gonna film it, and then we're gonna look at it in slow motion, and then Jeff's gonna go, "Oh yeah, just you know, throw it like you know, point when you release yeah, it. It's, it's just gonna, gonna be, be useful that. to know." No. Like how no. much later or early no. to let go? No. no. What I was... would look at it and say, that looks pretty good to me. Yeah, That'd exactly. be my. That <laughs> you, looks don't like think we'll, you don't think we'll be like, what was that show Kobe Bryant did on ESPN Details where he would break down film of how uh, NBA players were uh, could no. improve their game? No, don't I don't. You think we could do that for you, Eric? No. <laughs> No. Are you and asking also, if you're Kobe Bryant in this situation, Jeff? Yeah, no, I just well, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess yeah, so. Yeah, I, I think I can I think I think we could break down the film and help okay. you. I really do. No, I don't think it's that complicated. I was on your side at first. Uh, upon thinking about this further, let's calm down for a minute. You're the one that's supposed to be throwing an 80 mile per hour fastball. Yeah. Why don't we figure out how to improve your form oh, first? Listen, Why are listen. we going to Eric? No, no, listen. Uh, I'm I'm not I'm not fighting I don't need I don't need you to film. I know what I'm doing and how to do it right. I am fighting father time. I am fighting age. I'm, I'm me and LeBron, right? Like mm-hmm. it's just get every yeah. day the Grim Reaper is coming a little bit too. closer for our abilities. As do I. LeBron's out right now with a groin injury. Uh, my groin hasn't been fine for six months. Like, <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine if LeBron had had a fucking jock itch scenario? Like that was his lower <laughs> body. It's always a hamstring. You two are not dealing with similar. I guess he had the ankles. That's fair. Dude, if LeBron had my jock itch, he would miss the entire fucking season. <laughs> or he would be so uncomfortable, he'd play really well. Yeah. Nobody would want to guard <laughs> someone with jock itch it's all the way down the leg. You're not getting in there. <laughs> Nick's a DNP crotch rot. That's great. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to pass on trying to fix my frisbee throw then, right? Like, we don't have to worry about that. Like, I don't have to worry about trying to fix my my frisbee throw. I think Eric and I tried to play frisbee together, it would be like we're playing with ghosts. Like, it would be so far left and right on both (laughs) sides. Nobody (laughs) would assume we were in the same game. Here's what we do. Here's what we do. It doesn't have to be. On a bit of a wider lens, Jeff and Eric (laughs) side by side in the same shot, and we'll compare. And we'll take notes. We'll try and apply. Jeff knows exactly what he did. He can maybe move some of that information accurately to you. And with the visuals, I think you can throw a good Frisbee. Here's what's going to be really funny. I'm talking a big Frisbee game like I know what the fuck I'm talking about. 100%. Uh, (laughs) Much Uh like I did with a baseball game. Uh That (laughs) that one worked out for me. I have no idea if this Frisbee thing. I don't have the confidence for Frisbees that I had for hitting a baseball. So there's a very good chance we'll film this and Eric will instantly be better than me. I would Burger just love to find out. Episode one. All right. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. There's so many times in life, whether it's dealing with a personal issue or stuff at work, where it'd be so much easier if there was just a user manual for it. Unfortunately, that's not really a real thing. However, BetterHelp Online Therapy is basically the next best thing. Unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual, so when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Navigating any of life's challenges can make you feel unsure, whether it's a career change, a new relationship, or becoming a parent. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists, it's convenient and accessible anywhere, 100% online. I've talked about how much therapy has helped me in my past. It's uh, an amazing thing. Um, It has helped me in so many ways, and it's something that I regularly use in my personal life, the lessons and and things I've gained from those experiences. So I'd highly recommend it to anyone. Uh, As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online, plus it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. 
No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash face. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash face. Can we talk about notifications for a second? Who actually leaves those sounds on anymore? Well, besides that kind, that's another sale on Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow your business. Shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere. Whether your thing is vintage teas or recipes for ghee, start selling with Shopify and join the platform simplifying commerce for millions of your favorite businesses worldwide. With Shopify, you'll create an online store and your vibe, discover new customers, and grow the following that keeps them coming back. Shopify has all the sales channels sorted, so your business keeps growing from an in-person POS system to an all-in-one e-commerce platform even across social media platforms like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. And thanks to 24-7 support and free libraries full of educational content, Shopify's got you every step of the way. It's how every minute new sellers around the world make their first sale with Shopify, and you will too. Shopify makes selling simple so you can put yourself and your ideas out there. Whether your thing is making eBooks or earrings, Shopify makes your success possible. When you're ready to launch your thing into the spotlight, do it with Shopify, the commerce platform backing millions of businesses down the street and around the globe. Go on, try Shopify for free and start selling anywhere. This is possibility powered by Shopify. Sign up for a free trial at shopify.com face, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com face to start selling online today. Shopify.com face. Don't break the bank this holiday season. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that gives you the features of $200 shades for a fraction of the price, and a fraction of that price during their biggest Black Friday sale ever. Shady Rays are premium polarized shades featuring world-class optical clarity, substantial durability, and styles catered to everyone and every lifestyle. The best part about Shady Rays is their insane protection program featuring lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your shades on day one, they told us that they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Dropped in the lake or off a cliff, anything that happens to them, they'll replace. Looking to gift Shady Rays for the holidays? The lost and broken coverage transfers to anyone that you gift them to. They'll get great polarized shades and protection no matter what happens to them in the future. Get the wrong style for yourself or someone else? No need to worry. Avoid the hassle and the forced thank yous with free 30-day exchanges and returns. They stand behind their product and told our team that if anyone has a problem, they throw profit out the window and do what it takes to get it right. Free returns and exchanges, you either love the shades or Shady Rays will pay to ship them back. That's it. Shady Rays are the best holiday gift you've never thought of giving. Act now for their best Black Friday selection. Redeem only at ShadyRays.com, where you can find all their newest and best shades. Who do you think can throw a Frisbee the farthest? Accurately? Or just the farthest? Like, if, 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 if the, I guess the five of us got together in a field, let's say sometime next week, and we all had, a, we all had our own color-coded Frisbees uh, that were identical in every way, other than they were just different colors for identification, and we tried to see who could do, like, an Olympic-style, like, shot put Frisbee throw to see who could throw. I bet Nick is a dark horse. Oh, Oh, Nick Nick is a good one. I wasn't even considering Nick. Yeah, Nick Nick is a very running. Nick's an athletic guy. Nick is a very Nick is the only guy where if we shot me in slow motion, I think he could look at the footage uh, and really break down. Well, there's your problem. I think he could do that, but um, that is just based on knowing the rest of you and saying that he would just know better than everyone else. It's a pretty low bar. I just feel like, I feel like we got to find out like, cause you never know. One time Gavin and I had a spitting contest <laughs> and what <laughs> I spit talking distance. Yeah. Distance. How far did I spit? Gav? I had no idea that I had that in me. I must've spit yeah, 25, feet. Say 25 feet. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. Who knows? You, you, you might be no surprised. You Ga- spit Gavin, 25 feet. It's on video, dude. You can go watch it. I don't care. It, it may it. it may have been had some windage behind it. <laughs> did you do it in a tornado? Like what what is yeah, the scenario I, in which I, I did it during a tropical storm? <laughs> no. Anyway, I just I think it would be interesting and I think that I, I do agree. I think that Nick is the early favorite. I always yeah. also think it like 
we, you know, now that we're talking about Nick, what do you think? What do you think sport Nick is the best at? Because basketball. I'm in a basketball. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I bet Nick is really good at cornhole. He seems like he would be that. great at cornhole. Yeah, I can see what? that too. What sport? What Nick responded with, "Oh, dude, I rule a cornhole." <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, he absolutely would. He's got I cornhole and all over. Nick he has does. cornhole written all over him. He's a dad. He should be pretty good at it, just by default, I would think. He looks like a guy who would be holding a Bud Light in one hand and throwing the cornhole beanbag in like the other, and like he'd be <laughs> nailing it, right? Yeah. <laughs> We should have a non-athletic sports Olympics for face where we all compete against uh, I tell each you what, other with shit like frisbees and cornhole. We should probably bring Jack into the fold as well because he's really good at all that bar shit cornhole. Yeah. He's probably good at like swing the hook onto. Why the would hook we want to bring in someone good? I don't know, just to have like a good he baseline. Fucking brags about okay. how good he That's is fair. at swinging the hook, the the hook onto the hook thing. He fucking mm. don't get him started on that. What's the name of swing the hook onto the hook thing? I don't know. You know what we're talking about. Yeah, it's that bar game. It's the the well, you string. Like swing the hook hit. onto the hook thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's yeah. Like, yeah. like a ring, and you got to spin it and land it on a hook, get it caught. Yeah. I think it's just called ring on a hook, isn't it? Hooks, <laughs> ring, <laughs> toss, and shot. That's it. It just looks like it says hook and ring game. I think. I think you know we've been trying to figure. We've been trying to beef up the the uh, shoulder content, the the non regulation content. I think we've got something here. Uh, with this whole idea of sports, uh, of improving ourselves, whether it be getting Eric better at fucking Frisbee or me eating mayonnaise, although I'd really rather not go down that road, or competing against each other in non-athletic sports. I What is this? Gahoo. Ma I, I don't, don't use a magnetic dartboard. Let's yeah, use why would you use magnetic darts? Put holes in your wall, Andrew. Come Put, on. Yeah, come I'm on, just, man. Just throwing That's this motivation out. not to throw like shit. Oh, that's, that's okay. <laughs> it's the cheapest one. That's why I sent it. Mm-mm. Mm what about this one? What about a soft tip? Are we okay with a soft tip dart? No, no we want a regular dart board. Okay, Jesus Christ. Calm down. Regular <laughs> dart board. I'm trying to find a regular dart. They're tough to find. Well, Regulation dart board? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, now we got to sell regulation sports equipment. Oh, no, <laughs> Is this a... No. Hmm. Hey, I'd be interested in all of us playing darts, all of us throwing frisbees, and all of us throwing axes. Yeah. This just sounds like going to a bar. This I'd just like to play like cornhole against Nick. Well, this dude, is the just <gasps> face, face bar, bar crawl. Oh, yeah, but some of us don't drink. What about... We have, uh, to, you have, to, <laughs> we have to drink alcohol. It's about the game. What about, horse, what about horseshoes? Do you guys play horseshoes? I, I haven't thought about horseshoes, horseshoes since I was a kid. I hate horseshoes. Terrible. I don't think I've done that one. I don't like cornhole Terrible. either. Oh, that's... Why? Why don't you like cornhole? Why? Dog shit. What, what's, what's the problem with it? Just not satisfying. Not yes, satisfying? Too many points? There's too many points scored in cornhole for you? <laughs> no, I just don't find it very... What about that know, one? Not very fulfilling. Hmm. Yeah, isn't it, isn't it fun to throw a beanbag, though? They're, like, heavy and they, they're floopy? Yeah, I would say they are. I don't think underarm games are any good. Uh, hmm. So you don't like bowling? Cricket? You're against cricket? I actually don't like bowling. Jeff, right there with you, you buddy. Like Fuck bowling. bowling. No, I'm right yeah. there with him. <laughs> I'll agree with him on that one. Did you say cricket? Yeah. It's an underhand throw. That's, no, it isn't. Yeah, it is. You, you, you overhand it straight into the ground. They, they do the hand loop and then they release, don't they? <laughs> what? You think it's softball? No, I'm thinking of cricket. They do the, like, they spin the hand and then it bounces off the ground. Yeah, but they, are they, are they go over their head. They do, like, a big run yeah, up. Yeah, but they, they release swing. at the bottom. They, they release, release the at the top. bottom. Do they? Yeah, and it goes really? down into the ground and then up into the bat. Are you the serious? Wicket. Yeah. Cricket throw. Cricket bowl. Dude, I think fast pitch softball might be the same. Oh, that's so thing overhand. That could that's be more so overhand. overhand. That is so such overhand. an overhand. You're yeah, trying to murder yeah. them. Boom. No, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. You're right. He's out. Have they has anybody ever invented underhand cricket? Wow. <laughs> well, you would underhand if you were maybe like right by the wicket when someone's are you saying that like a softball version of cricket? Like yeah, like cricket, like it, like fast pitch cricket. What's mm. interesting about cricket and that that angle uh, doesn't show is how far away they are from each other. Like that's actually quite a long throw. It's crazy. I really thought. It was All right, I'm gonna see. I want to see what the distant uh, cricket pitch. I hope it's sixty feet work. six inches. Uh, it it's, is. What is that? Is a cricket pitch 66 feet? The cricket pitch uh, length is 22 yards, approximately 66 feet in length. 
So it's only just a little bit further than a uh, uh, baseball. Yeah, just a well, little. Well, we compare it to softball, though, aren't we? With an underhand. Yeah, but cricket's overhand. Yeah, cricket's overhand, Gavin. Well, baseball isn't underhand. Yeah, baseball's neither, overhand. Neither is cricket. Sixty feet, right? Yeah, yeah, Gavin. I don't know. Again, I don't know if you've seen this cricket gif. Uh, so he's throwing overhand, and so is baseball. Um, yeah, I understand. But two. what's the what what is the comparison you're trying to make? The distance is about the same. That's all we're saying. Oh, and it's pretty far. <laughs> <laughs> You're so defensive. I'm not saying, sure over what. I'm saying like it, it would be very difficult to underhand that with any power. It'd be very difficult. How do you feel about side hand? <laughs> what are we talking about today? What, <laughs> what is this episode? I, I was talking about throws. Always like in football, when he throws out of the side, throwing. the side throw. The I always, side I always throw. thought the, the sidearm cool. throw is the best pitch in baseball. It's so cool. I just, I mainly wanted to make a bet with you involving darts, but it sounds like we got a whole other thing happening with these games. Did you ever say what? Oh, what happened to him? <laughs> oh. What do you mean? He's throwing a baseball about. really hard. <laughs> it's, it's a sidearm side side car. car. It's, just a, si it's a, a sidearm throw. Of a, of a Yankee throwing yeah. sideways? <laughs> Very I, need, I need to see an x-ray of that guy in that moment. <laughs> it, yeah, it's, it's, it's how, it's how sidearm is. <laughs> Where's his spine? <laughs> That's, That's crazy. Some sidearm guys. That's what they call them. They used to call them like submarine pitchers. Oh, you're going to hate this. You're, oh, Gavin. You think Oh, you're going to hate this. Yeah, yeah. Gavin, check out baseball. Photo. That's a submarine <laughs> pitcher? <laughs> What's going on? There's a, a guy pitching at like ankle level almost. He's <laughs> <laughs> oh, just bro sidearm broken off. These are, for the What's audience. What's happening with all their arms? <laughs> For the audience, we're just throwing, we're just showing Kevin pictures of people throwing sidearm halfway through the swing, so their arm is going the wrong way. I, when I went to the arcade with you, Kevin, <laughs> that you don't remember, that's how you threw. You were a sidearm thrower. You're a submarine pitcher. He is a submarine pitcher, and he is quite accurate. <laughs> that guy looks so broken. That's how you throw. I was shocked by the four, but you were. I couldn't complain. You're getting tickets. Huh? No, I was. I doing that. Oh, you God. were. You were hundred percent sidearm thrower. <laughs> That's so funny. I have a question for you, Gavin, regarding Toad in the Hole. Very serious question. Okay. What percent British does a person need to be to qualify? Would you say to be on Toad in the Hole? What level of Brit can you stand being around before it's too much? Like uh... if their DNA, if they were like seventy percent. I don't think it's DNA. I think it's if you've lived there. You lived. Okay. So even if you, you genetically had a majority of your ancestry there, it doesn't count. You have to live there. Yeah. I think you have to have lived in the culture. Got it. Okay. Mm. Like I'm, I'm half Italian. I don't, I, do I know anything about Italy? Nope. That's fair. Yeah. I was just curious if it was like a sense for you or, or like based on what Jeff said, you hate all other British people or European people. <laughs> So just no, he just if, he he doesn't hate all of the British people. He doesn't like to be around other British people in America. That clearly okay. makes him uncomfortable. I met a British person at a bar three days ago. Loved it. Had a lo lovely little chat. So you, how many episodes of Tone the Hole do you think they would have last? <laughs> I think we could have done one episode of Tone the Hole. Really, a full episode? Yeah, that's great. I'd ask him like, you know, what brought him to Austin, all that stuff. <laughs> He said he worked in media. Yeah, I could have done at least an episode of Toad in the Hole. That's great. I think it almost becomes worse the further it goes in Toad in the Hole. Because that's like the end of the road. If you went like 25 episodes with somebody, something goes wrong for that Toad in the Hole to be gone. <laughs> becomes that's like a full-time job. And then yeah, I Toad in the Hole. Them, <laughs> it's almost, I think it's almost more offensive because if you Toad in the Hole somebody within five minutes, you don't have an opportunity to really know who they are. But if you spend 26 episodes with somebody and then Toad in the Hole them, then they're done. You've evaluated it. You've gotten a good sample size and you just think there's nothing else there. Isn't that just <laughs> on, a, on a much longer scale how friendship works? Sort of, I guess. Yeah, but I think this is worse because... <laughs> <laughs> you don't necessarily say toad in the hole, but no. you just drift apart from some yeah, people. Yeah, you, you change as people with time, but there's not enough time for you to change as a person when doing a toad in the hole thing, so that wouldn't be the issue. But you're right, it is a condensed version of it. Do we need to recap what toad in the hole is for the... You probably should. Newer listeners. Toad in the Hole is a, a, a podcast, I guess, a, a side show of this show that we joked about doing where Gavin would interview, I mean, not even interview, just have conversations with other British people. And whenever he got sick of the conversation, he'd yell Toad in the Hole and a new British person <laughs> would take their spot. 
All based on J- Jeff saying that I apparently hate all British people that I come across. Yes. In, uh, in America. Until three days ago, I would agree. But I, I wasn't. I don't even know this person exists, to be honest with you. If you didn't record with him, for all I know, you invented this to strengthen. <laughs> <laughs> He's had this in his back pocket for weeks since he brought about <laughs> since we brought it up yeah. initially. He's just been waiting to deploy it. This has been a fascinating episode. How have how have you guys been doing? We haven't really spoken a lot in the past week. I haven't even looked at my notes for this week. Really? Do you have many oh, notes? I have one note. Oh, what's your note? Well, regulation animation came out. It did. People oh yeah, seem we to should- love it. We should talk. We should mention that. Please watch it. It's on Rooster Teeth. It's on YouTube. Please, it's, it's on uh, our, yeah. It's watched, not getting uh, as many views as our live action stuff does, and I wish it would because it was a lot more work, and I think it's gorgeous. Oh, way more work. Like 50 yeah. times more work. <laughs> yeah, f- 5 billion times more work. Uh, yeah, I, I watched uh, the early cut, I guess, before it came out, and then when I went to watch it after it came out, I saw that someone had sort of chimed in on the end of it, recording a little bit of live action stuff with uncensored f- faces. Oh. I did see it's, that as I mean, well. it's not really part of the show, it's just... Uh additional piece that they said hey can you do this quickly and then i will say nobody on their end ad- edited it they just asked me to do this suddenly who's and they that was it uh that would be uh animation i suppose right <laughs> <laughs> i mean do we do we let <laughs> face not get bleeped where do we do it isn't that a general sort of brand no, wide rule? That stupid rule that we've come up with? Well, I, mean, it's I think in, it's, it's not in the show, so. Yeah, it's really it is in the show if you put it in the freaking episode. It's not in the episode. It's That's literally in the that. YouTube video. The episode ends, and then it goes to that. That's the end? It's before the credits. Yeah, the episode is animation, and then yeah. Do you think the, do action. you think me talking against a wall is animation? That's not drawn, Gavin. That's just me. <laughs> do you think I'm animation? Right. <laughs> When I, when I say f- face, is it bleeped? <laughs> can I? No, but it's part of it. Can I? I'm, I'm with them. You're wrong in this. Can I'm I just wrong? say? Yeah. yeah. If, oh. you watch, I, if you watch a fucking movie, the trailers aren't part of the movie. It's a different thing. They're not all the same thing. Things end. How about this? Move on. Well, I get how it, about, but it's how still about, how about on this? our channel. It's not like it's in a Twitter video. In Gavin's defense... Is a post credit scene a part of a movie still? Like if it's like in a Marvel movie? Yes. It probably is, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, typically a post credit scene isn't somebody just spiking the camera and going, hey, if you like that, check out comic books. Yeah, no, that's like, true. <laughs> <laughs> I also, I feel like the post credit scene rarely has anything to do with the film. It's setting yeah, it's up like something else. Often, uh, Sometimes not even canon, really, but yeah. <laughs> but it's just weird to hear it uncensored. It is. That's why I, I, I would agree with you there. It is Can strange. I, it's not this like we're talking a, about it on a different podcast where it wouldn't be censored. It's true. This is a great. <laughs> this. I've been struggling with something for a couple weeks, and this is a great point to mention it. Uh, I'm. I really hate the name <laughs> face at this point. It's really wearing me down. Why? <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I go back and forth with it. Like I did it to I did it to prank myself because I knew I would get here, and I've been here a few <laughs> times. You know, it comes in waves where I think it's incredibly funny, and then I hate it, and then I think it's funny, and then I hate it, and it's like this self loathing, making fun of myself, enjoying myself kind of thing. But I'm on. I'm definitely on the like. I just fucking. I I just I just don't like it right now. It's fucking annoying me. I'll get back to the other side soon. But god damn. Yeah. Well, I mean, you did it. It's your idea. I know, you. I know. No, I just, I, I really like the way it looks uh, in the logo. Like, I love the logo. Yeah, it's a pretty logo. So I you, think you think that f- face should always be censored, Gavin? Is I think point. in our content, obviously, you're gonna if you talk about it elsewhere, different videos, it's not gonna be censored. If it's on our channel, in our content, in a video that we made, yeah, it should be censored. Okay, I'll, that's a I'll part ask of the brand, to censor it. it. I'll say, well, it's I'll rude, say Gavin, just because it's I'll stupid. Say, I'll say Gavin said censor this, please. And it's, uh, look, I'm not making the call. I'm just throwing it to the group. What does everyone else think? I think that we should endeavor going forward to make sure it's always censored in content that we release under the face umbrella. But I think it's it's folly to go back and re-upload that video. Oh, yeah, don't go back. I'm just saying, no. it's, uh, to me, one of the funny gags in face is that it's censored when you say it that way, but not when you just say the word on its own. I will so say... Nice, nice touch. I, thought, I, I used just, to think it was funny, too. <laughs> is it not funny anymore? 
I just fucking I'm just I'm just down on the name right oh, now. Okay. I'll get, I'll, it'll be funny to me again in like a week, I'm sure. I think it's interesting just going through a text. I mean, you did make a differentiator in content, but you you just use face uncensored all the time. Any mention Who? of you and our text messages, any mention of face, you don't use the censors. You just spell it. Uh, ri- well, yeah, it's written down. Yeah, but I, I censor it whenever I write it. Do you really? Every so time. much effort to, to shift It absolutely eight. is. But it's the name. It's what it's called. I'm going to see. I'm going to search my message to see if I ever typed it censored. I can't think. I, I don't think I ever have typed it censored. Am I the only one that's been writing it censored everywhere whenever I talk about it? Probably, yeah. I'm too committed to the bit, I guess. Maybe I should start doing that. Maybe if I'm kicking off so much about Eric putting it uncensored in a video, maybe I should... Uh... It's nice that you're seeing that and I didn't have to say it. Thank you very much. I've already made the ask, though. So. I mean, I've already done it. I've already made the ask, so I'm not retracting it. So now we'll see if it happens. Look, I'm just throwing oh. this a group. Wasn't really an action thing. I just thought that no, was, it was interesting. No, it was an action thing. No, you yeah, it, it doesn't it was matter. an action thing. No, it was an action it's, thing. It's funnier that it's a, it's a discussion. Well, we're talking about texts because this, this perfectly segues into a thing I wanted to bring up for a while. It's been on my notes for, for a few weeks at this point. Have you ever noticed, Jeff, okay. that Gavin is a three-ha man in your text conversations with him? Gavin very rarely goes beyond the three ha's. Occasionally, rarely, he gives you two ha's, which is acceptable. But I have almost never gotten more than three ha's out of Gavin and anything I've ever well, said. Well, here's how my ha's work, typically. Uh, like a ha-ha... That's probably like same as typing lol, where it's like, yeah. did you really lol? Well, probably not. It's just funny. It's like a, <laughs> but, but a three ha to me is like, that's funny. You know, like that is pretty funny. But any more than that is like, I actually burst out laughing. So you just don't actually burst out laughing at anything Andrew ever says. Yeah. I feel like I have done. I must have given you four ha's before. Oh, it happens occasionally. Very yeah. rarely. But I'm saying, I'm asking Jeff, have you ever noticed this? Have you ever, have you ever looked at your uh, haws with Gavin? When, usually when Gavin and I text, I get seven or eight haws from him. But that's just Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I will say this, though. Uh, two haws in my family is an insult. If somebody yeah. responds with two haws, well, that's like a thumbs up emoji. Really? That's like a, that's like a, a, a gentle, like, fuck you. I, it, it, wasn't fu- it wasn't funny enough. Uh, so I'm just going <laughs> to give you like the most basic of haws. If yeah. you ever, if you ever text Emily to haws, she will not be happy. She will think you're upset. Interesting. With yeah. And I won't, See, I won't, I won't. If you, if I text any of you to haws, that's what it means. It means I wasn't, it wasn't entertained at all. Yeah. You, I'm not sure how this will make you feel, but um, on the 3rd of November <laughs> and this Sunday, I gave two different people four ha's. You gave four ha's? I gave four ha's to Jason Saldana, who uh, had a funny dream about me, and okay. Daniel Fabello, who sent me a funny edit, and, I, okay. and they were both made me laugh out loud. I okay. so fucking four far ha's. back in my text to find a text from Gavin. Jesus Christ. Interesting. Oh my okay. god, the last time Gavin texted me. Is this why I find out we're not friends anymore? The last time <laughs> Gavin texted me. I'll be honest, most of the four ha's I'm receiving. <laughs> the last time Gavin texted me, I think it was October 16th. That's not too bad. Three weeks. I mean, I find, I find that people I see in real life a lot, or communicate with a lot, I don't te- necessarily text a lot. Yeah. It's fascinating that you think the two ha's is like an offense because I agree. For me, it's more of just like an acknowledgement that uh, something funny was attempted or it was mildly. Yeah, annoyed. something funny was attempted. That's yeah. what it means. That is exactly what it means. It's like, oh, you tried. Okay, here you go. I think yeah. most often I'll write it after something I've said. The ha's? The four Like ha's? laughing at yourself. No, the two ha's. Two ha's. Oh, I see. Yeah, sometimes it can be used as like a tone setter. Yeah, like, like I just did this dumb thing. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Hey, we're, hey, Gavin, would you do me a favor? Could you try to throw a couple of extra ha's Andrew's way every once in a while? I think, uh, I think emotionally he could use it. No, um, I could, I, I've definitely sent him four ha's. I, I just feel like we need to find out what, it, what like caused he, them. You know he's trying, so just be a little oh. more liberal with your ha's. Um, I just, I s- we're, yep. we're f- 55 minutes in, and I just realized, weren't we supposed to do this stupid icy hot again because Eric no. bitched out last time? Oh, no. shit. We were. No. 
I think I'm we were, no. right? Er- well, Eric and Nick no. didn't do it, and so we were going to have to go one more time so that all five of us could be miserable at the same that time. That was going to, yeah, that was supposed yeah. to happen. No, I said thank no God, then. Thank God we're, thank God we're doing two no. episodes today, right? Why is Eric not saying anything about it? That's oh, I point. don't have Icy Hot. Oh, my God! <sighs> that's that's. Tragic. I can put, like, you want me to use, like, regular lotion? And I can pretend, <laughs> like, ah! Like, oh, no! So goopy. Goopy? That's what you'd say? So goofy? Yeah, is it, is it goofy? <laughs> no. I'm going to get you a, a lifetime supply of Icy Hot for Christmas, Eric. I mean, a lifetime supply for me, I think, would probably be just the one tube because I don't use it yeah. for anything. Mm-hmm. So, thank you. I, but I'll no, get you at least you. 10. Yeah. No. If you can you make me cookies it. again, that would be great. That was a great <laughs> Christmas gift one time. Do you I'm think- sure I will. Do you think, Jeff, that Eric snuck in the sneaky animal question before we started just to throw us off track so we couldn't, you couldn't be like, oh, oh no, if sure you would have brought up the icy hot thing right at the beginning, I would have told you I didn't have it. Oh, I don't care. Okay. The sneaky animal thing. I still, I'm still kind of flummoxed that we don't know what the sneakiest animal is and that you still think it's a fish for some reason. Uh, doesn't make sense to me. I just think it's, you're always surprised. We don't need to go over old grand though. Yeah, you should have had it, but I'm okay that you don't. Oh, I found a ha 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 ha. Congrats. To Andrew. Feb 19th. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You said, just bit. paused to fix a technical difficulty. I don't remember this, but apparently last time I was streaming this for you, I didn't have any audio. I said it was just game audio. Wasn't it? You said, no, apparently not. Just lost my save to reset audio for the oh, audience. Oh, my misery. My that pain is what, what drinks. <laughs> and that my was, pain is the four haws. <laughs> that was four haws. <laughs> Because I was, I think I just landed. I was in the airport just laughing at my Okay, phone. so my misery, telling stories about dreams that you're in and edits <laughs> or what I need if I want to consist, if I want to bump up my four ha writing. You can't, you can't try and force a four ha. No. I, 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 I five no, or can't. six or seven ha you in real life on face. Yeah, but that's different. That's for work. It is. Do yeah. you think, uh, like, you're performing here? It's not. This isn't. This isn't even the real you. This is the character you play uh, on internet content. Uh, that's one of, my, one of my favorite criticisms we get of all time is that we're playing characters. That's uh, awesome. That's so do, funny. Uh, do you think, Andrew, now that if and when the next time you receive a four or five ha from Gavin, that you'll believe it's true? Or do you think now, in some, at some point, somewhere in the back of your mind, you're always going to question, is he just, is he just, you know, is he just entertaining me? Is he being kind to me right now by giving me four haws? Is it really four haws? Or no, uh, hmm. is he channeling that conversation we had and, and trying to cut me some slack? Yeah, I, th- I think there's definitely going to be a reviewing and there, there will be scrutiny. Like if I don't think it deserves four haws, but he gives me four haws, I'd call him out on it. All you're doing we'll is see. making me self-conscious about how many haws I'm giving. <laughs> I've got to try and not let it affect me. Well, he's pretty self-conscious about how, how many haws he's receiving from you, so it sounds like you're well, on equal footing now. No, it's just, I remember I got four haws, and I was like, I never get four haws, because, Jeff, you're very <laughs> generous with your haws. So am I, I feel like. I enjoy laughing. I yeah, enjoy me a good too. Laugh. What's, the point, what's the point of living if you're not laughing? <laughs> I know, it would be a problem if you only gave more than three haws. That'd be a psychotic move if ever, no matter what it was, at least five, I'd be terrified of that person. Hmm. I found that funny, but my character didn't. <laughs> what? Oh, I see. <laughs> Can you believe we get to do this again in five minutes? I can't. Oh, I'm Woo! excited. Me too. I didn't even get to my dumb notes. Of which I'm I so excited to see your notes. I don't have that many, and they're not that good. Great. Thanks for <laughs> listening <laughs> <Next week. laughs> to another episode of the face podcast who knows what's in store for us next week will i eat the mayonnaise will eric improve his frisbees will gavin be liberal with the haws you'll have to tune in to find out on <laughs> face hey guys major league fan jack here with a look at next week's episode of face did gavin take the best photo ever jeff gets passionate about milk andrew doesn't understand technology what will the thanksgiving episode be like the boys like physical receipts. Let's see those mouse pads. And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face. <laughs>